Hello. Just before we get onto today's episode, I'd like to apologise. The quality of the audio isn't amazing today. Uh, usually we record on Zoom, but because of technical issues, we had to go into Microsoft Teams, and it's just reduced the quality of the audio. Uh, however, it's still still functional, so hopefully you can gain value from today's episode. Thank you. They're very, very popular over in Australia and America, um, most prominently, and then they're starting to to move over to the to the UK, um, the tiny house movement, as as people like to to call it. But yeah, I've been following it on a personal level for for quite a number of years, and thought they were great. I thought they were a great concept. They're they're aesthetically pleasing. They make maximum use of minimal space, and I think that's really clever. Yeah, sustainability is a big thing. It's becoming more and more important. Uh, councils are paying more and more attention to it. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that's one of the benefits of tiny homes. Hello and welcome back to the Glamour Tech Podcast. Today we're joined by Jordan Spittle of The Cube. He's the Associate Director at The Cube. Uh, the Cube uh, manufacture a variety of buildings in a variety of sectors. Uh, but what we're going to focus on today is the, their tiny home arm, I suppose. Uh, so we're going to get into what exactly a tiny home is, uh, how it's used in the, in the housing sector, but in particular how it's been becoming slightly more popular in the glamping sector as well. Um, and how uh, prospective glamping site owners might be interested in using them on their glamping sites. Uh, but before we do that, um, welcome to the show, Jordan. Uh, could you just Thanks. give us a, a quick run through of, of your background and the Cube's background and how you came to be where you are today? Yeah, sure. No, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and speak. Um, so, yeah, Jordan Spittle, Associate Director at the Cube. Um, we fabricate, design and build uh, modular buildings and, and tiny homes. Um, we started the company in 2007, um, primarily with a focus on kind of like the luxury garden studio, um, and then moved into education, leisure, commercial, um, and now tiny homes, which is very different for us, a different sector, but also very exciting in such a, a rapid and, and fast growing and innovative space um, which is which is where we met you guys and what exactly is a tiny home then so a tiny home um, it's got a few definitions um, ultimately for us it's a um, portable um, unit which is built on top of a chassis and transported to site whether that be towed or transported in a kind of more traditional kind of park home sense um, so we we build using using timber frame construction um, we take take our learnings and, and kind of experience in modular construction to, you know, to, into the tiny home sector. Um, so for us, yeah, uh, almost we, we look at it as a home away from home. So so we've gone for quite high quality, high spec um, tiny home. And, and yeah, ultimately it's a, um, uh, a tiny home on, on wheels, really. Yeah, we saw, we can, we're can. we going to get into the glamping show in a little bit, but we saw um, an example of your tiny homes at the glamping show, and it, it's getting loads and loads of interest. Um, it looks really nice, really sharp, really modern. Uh, and obviously, you know, it's, the clue's in the name. It's not a, a huge, huge thing, but um, there's plenty enough space inside, and it, and it is quite an interesting concept. So we will link yeah. to your website um, in, in the show notes for this. So if anyone's interested in knowing what these look like, then um, they feel free to click on that link in, in the description. We'll start We'll start talking about how tiny homes can actually be used as a home rather than a glamping unit to start with. Um, where did tiny homes originate? How did they originate? And how did they start to become popular? So kind of personally, I've been following the tiny home movement from, you know, through Instagram. There's shows on Netflix now and, and so on. But I've been interested in, in tiny homes from a personal perspective for, five or six years now um they're very very popular over in australia and america um most prominently and then they're starting to to move over to the to the uk um the tiny house movement as as people like to to call it um but yeah i've been following it on a personal level for, for quite a number of years and thought they were great i thought they were a great concept they're they're aesthetically pleasing they make maximum use of minimal space and i think that's really clever um, in in kind of design and also build 
Um, and, and so we've taken what we know and, and our skills and experience in modular buildings um, and, and, and try to do something a little bit different. And the reason it, it came about and, you know, obviously COVID has had an, an, an impact in that decision making and in, in, in kind of trying to diversify into a different sector. But for us, we 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 spoke with a number of companies out in Australia and America and partnered with a company um, called Designer Eco Tiny Homes. And they're based in Australia and they're one of the top builders and designers of tiny homes in Australia. And we got them really well with their team. We, we shared a lot of similar values um, and, yeah, really kind of struck up a relationship whereby we have a lot of support from them in terms of design and build and using their experience and what works well over there and bringing that over across to the UK um, to try and do something a little bit different. And why do you think there is such a, a tiny home movement primarily in Australia and the US, but as, as is becoming apparent, is picking up pace here, over here as well? I think, you know, don't get me wrong, legislation over there is is, um, is different to here. So it's a lot easier to be able to um, live in them full time more freely. Um, it helps, obviously, that they have probably a bit more land than us here, here in the UK. Um, but I think there's been a change in perception. Um, and I think that's probably the number one case of, of us trying to do something like this over here in that people now want to live you know, potentially more minimalistic. And, and, you know, by all means, tiny homes won't be for everyone. The, the, it, it's, it's certain, that's certainly not the case. But if you can live more in more of a minimalistic lifestyle, you know, if you can get rid of some of your possessions and, and so on, th there's a real great opportunity for it. And also um, th there's obviously a cost benefit. You know, you, you, you can potentially be mortgage free by living in the tiny home. So, you you know, what, what you're earning doesn't necessarily go out on, on a mortgage. Um, but I think, yeah, th th there's been a big perception change and, and probably the, the, the biggest factor in that has been kind of the say it's sustainability messaging. So they're built from more sustainable materials. They're built off site. So you've got less disruption to, to your site. So they're delivered ultimately, um, you know, plug in and, and away you go. So that that's a, a, a pretty key detail of them. Yeah, and talking about, we'll move on to sustainability later on when we're talking about the glamping side, but in terms of minimalism, uh, I, I th I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that um, Elon Musk now lives in a, in a tiny home. I think he's gone on some sort of culture change where he's got rid of all his possessions and stuff and gone off and lived in a tiny home, which is obviously cool I for heard you that. guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard that as well. And, and there has been a, um, as I say, more of a focus on it here in the UK. And um, I know George Clark's Amazing Spaces have covered something similar. Um, so, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we think that there's a massive case for them. I, I think here in the UK, you know, getting land to, to live in these um, is, is an issue. But, hey, you know, you've got to start somewhere. And, um, and we feel with the success of them in, in different countries and the communities that pop up, uh, tiny home communities. And, and there's one starting in um, Bristol, which I'm, I'm sure you're aware of. But, yeah, it's a, I, I think potentially that there's, it, it, can, it can help, I believe, tackle the, the affordable housing crisis um, with, with companies that are looking to, to do it here in the UK. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a... It's a, it's a kind of a great example of an alternative way of living, in, in my opinion. Yeah, and let's move on to the, the glamping side of things, which is obviously why people are listening to this podcast. Um, we've, we, there are all sorts of glamping units on the market. Obviously, the main ones are, are glamping pods and shepherd huts, but there's also, you know, yurts, tents, all kinds of things. And, and tiny homes are one of the units that have recently arrived onto the market really we're seeing a few sites pop up with these um we're actually doing a little bit of research in, into the american glamping market at the minute and i, I seem to see uh, a few quite a few tiny homes or tiny home styles um style units on on american glamping sites as well so i think i can see um stuff like stuff like this um becoming more impactful on the uk glamping market um why why do you think they are suitable for glamping businesses like it's a good question, and 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 the the glamping show kind of really did open our eyes into the variety of units that are out there, and and we were you know really really surprised, and and well no surprise is the wrong word. There, there was a big focus on quality and, and variety, um, as you touched on there. I think 
as you say, there's, there's lots of different variety out there. And we, and we feel kind of tiny homes fit quite well into, into the space because firstly, you know, they can be built off site and, and delivered um, on site. They can be moved around the glamping site as well because they're built on a chassis. So I think that's really one of the main considerations and, and benefits of a tiny home is that once it has been delivered or, or taken to site, it can be moved around. So that helps obviously with maintenance and um, if you have any rules on how long a certain unit can be in one space for one time and so on. So I think that that does help. Um, we, we we looked at it from, um, again, taking the learnings from our from our kind of modular buildings experience um, and, and the use of timber frame and, and felt that it was it was something a little bit different, something a little bit unique. Uh, as I say, said earlier, we have quite a high focus on um, more of the luxury end and um, yeah hopefully that that shone through in the in the unit that we had on on show at the uh, clamping show yeah certainly there was always a big crowd of people around it um, we were quite impressed by that and probably one of the more popular units at the show um, so, good, and, it's, you. and as, you, as you say it's you know it's high end as well and we always try and push our clients towards the high end part of the market because it's generally more profitable and also as, as the market develops and eventually moves towards saturation perhaps, um, we would always prefer our clients to be on the higher end of the market, feel like you're, you're better protected there um, when yeah, supply, I, supply catch up with demand. I think so and, and I think kind of, again, going to, to try and be a little bit different, you know, we had the big massive window um as a, as a ultimately a whole elevation trying to to open up the space so as you said um earlier it, it, it's a small unit but it, it doesn't feel cramped it doesn't feel like you're in in such a small unit it's only 4.8 by 2.4 um in terms of, of width and length um so yeah not a big ground floor area as such but once you're in there you know we designed it to have a lot of storage um king size mezzanine bedroom fully functioning kitchen and, and living area so although it is a small space it doesn't necessarily feel that way uh once you once you're in it and presumably are there on suite toilets as well in there yes yeah sorry fully functioning um on suite shower um toilet and, and sink yeah yeah and that, that's another thing that we always recommend i suppose it ties into the, the high-end aspect of um you know which we, we tend to find that on suite toilets in glamping units are a lot more attractive than uh, composting toilets and things like that um so uh, you mentioned earlier the, the sustainability side of things as well um how is it that tiny homes do um allow for a more sustainable way of living or in our case glamping so we we build using timber um so very rarely do do we use steel the the chassis that the the um tiny home is built on top of is steel um for for kind of obvious reasons and transportation and rigidity so that the the steel chassis acts as the the building's foundations ultimately so there's not a dig into the ground as as per what we would do in our in our modular buildings um and i think the other the other thing probably is is the, the use of kind of um solar and, and wind energy so the the unit that we had on on show at the uh the glamping show had a hybrid kind of solar wind main system um so it utilized uh gas solar um battery inverter to to generate power um and and to charge the you know the solar charged a, a battery so that when you know when there's no sun the, the unit will still be lit and and so on by by almost harnessing the, the power that's been generated throughout the day okay and you know our bread and butter is getting planning permission for clients and um as part of our feasibility study offering we we, we you know go through all the all the local council's policies and analyze it against our client site um, and they all without fail have a, have a policy on sustainability and now you might be making a trade-off with a tiny home in that they they do look quite like a like a sort of mini house i suppose so it could be considered you know maybe less less natural harder to blend into their landscape than say glamping pods or, or tents um however if you do have sustainable features like solar panels as you just said um that's councils like that and it would definitely factor into decision when it comes to the planning application stage um yeah. and it's all things that are taken into account and yeah sustainability is a big thing it's becoming more and more important uh councils are paying more and more attention to it 
Um, so, yeah, I definitely think that's one of the benefits of tiny homes. I think externally, you touched on it there, um, blending into the environment. The, the beauty of, of, of the tiny home and, 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 and all of our models is we want to work with our clients to to build and design something that meets their exact requirements. So perhaps unlike other units that, that kind of glamping sites may have, we we can operate a completely bespoke process. So um, ultimately everything down from, you know, the, the flooring to the external finish of the tiny home can be dictated by the client. And I think sometimes that can also be dictated by planning policy. So if, for example, it was in a, a woodland area or needed to be timber clad to, to kind of blend in with the um, environment, that's certainly something that, that we can do and, and take on as part of our process. What sort of price range are you looking at for a tiny home if you want to buy one brand new, perhaps bespoke for a glamping site? So our, our prices range dependent upon kind of size and, and spec of models ultimately. And, and you know, the, the more bespoke we go, I suppose, and may have an impact upon price point. But the smallest models in, in our range start from 30,000 plus that anywhere up to a, you know, a seven, eight, nine meter um, tiny home that will sleep for, which can be up to around 80,000 plus fat. Yeah. Okay, so in the same sort of similar sort of ballpark as pods and, and huts, maybe slightly more premium end of the market, but yeah, so that's just, you know, for, for, for pods and huts, you're looking between 20 and 40k, uh, yeah, 20, 25, 40k. Um, so yeah, similar sort of end of the market, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, and you know, with with with, with the glamping, um, market becoming more and more popular and more and more entrants to the market over the years um i do think it is definitely worth bearing in mind looking for these alternative forms of accommodation um with with glamping pods you know they're everywhere at the minute they are great units there's a reason they're so popular and people do want to stay in them um but if you do want to differentiate yourself from the market it, it is it's definitely worth looking into to, to look at these tiny homes or or the kind of units you know there's, there's all sorts like gypsy wagons and 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 completely bespoke structures as well um so it is definitely something worth looking into um so if, if someone wants to get in touch to figure out how you can help with their with their whether it's as a home or a glamping unit um how can they get in touch with you jordan so by by a few different means we're, we're kind of live on on instagram um, and facebook at the cube eco tiny homes um our website as well which i'm sure we can link to um, but ultimately, yeah, can give one of the team a call and, and just have an initial conversation. I think what's important is to engage, um, you know, with a potential manufacturer or builder at an early stage. I think we can offer advice and expertise on on, on spec and also finishes and, and so on. So I do think it's good to engage at an early stage. And, and you know, we, we work with Glamper Tech, so I think it's important to, to stay here, you know, that we we can work hand in hand with you. Um, you know, you, you might need information from us to help with planning applications and, and vice versa. And, and you guys are always on hand to support us. Um, so it's a great relationship. But ultimately, yeah, and anybody can give give our give our team a call and, and we'll be happy to have a conversation and, and, and see where it goes from there. Absolutely. I would just say here it's spelled Q-U-B-E rather than C-U-B-E. I don't want to yeah. go to the wrong website. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, no, good point. Perfect. Well, thank you for your time, Jordan. Um, and as I say, all the all the website links and the email addresses will be will be put in the description. Um, so do get in touch if you are interested in a tiny home. But yeah, thanks for your time, Jordan. And we'll be seeing you at the Farm Business Innovation Show, which is on the 10th and 11th of November in Birmingham. That's actually an event for people with farmland who are looking to diversify their income. Um, it's free to attend, I believe, as well. So we're going to be there, Glamatech. Uh, the Cube will be there. Um, so do come along and say hello to one of us if you are interested in, in pursuing a glamping project. But yeah, thanks Jordan, and we'll see you soon. No problem. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks Perfect. for your time. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Glamper Tech Podcast. I hope you enjoyed and that you found value in today's episode. If you did, feel free to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts as it really helps us move up the podcast rankings. Thank you.